Welcome to For the First Time in Forever, the show that aims to fill the gaps in all of your festive watch lists. Last week we merged Christmas with Halloween to take a look at the stop motion classic The Nightmare Before Christmas. And if you haven't seen that video, you can check it out by clicking the link in the description below. But on this Christmas Eve, or at least that's when I'm posting the video, it is time to take a look at one of the most beloved Christmas films out there. Arguably, people say it's the greatest Christmas film of all time, but it's a film that I am watching for the first time. This is It's a Wonderful Life. Wait! Wait a second. I am going to be talking about spoilers for this film, so consider this your warning now. Yay! Hello, Bedford Falls! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas, movie house! Merry Christmas, Emporium! Merry Christmas, you wonderful building alone! Hey! Merry Christmas, Mr. Potter! It's a Wonderful Life, considered to be one of the greatest Christmas movies of all time, topping the lists of hundreds and thousands of critics. Said to be a film impossible not to love, and yet, I'd never seen it. It follows the life of George Bailey, from a little boy working as a druggist, to a grown family man working as the head of a loan company, who faces seemingly overwhelming odds as his life begins to crumble around him. But, when George is at his lowest low, he is visited by his guardian angel to show George the good he has done in his life, and to appreciate what he has around him. Would I be lying if I had said that the overwhelming hype and celebratory nature that surrounds this movie kind of put me off seeing it for a little while? No, that's that's basically why I, I haven't seen it. Because you get so many films that just have these um, almost insurmountable expectations attached to them. And I'm just like, if I end up not liking this or not liking it to the extent that other people do i'm just gonna feel really disappointed because i had that recently with citizen kane it's heralded as the greatest film of all time and i find it dull and forgettable but nevertheless i rolled up my sleeves dived headfirst into frank capra's 1946 classic and what did i think yeah yeah it's okay i'm I, all right it's 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 pretty darn good Oh, who am I kidding? It's it's fantastic. It's, yeah, it's the GOAT. It's the greatest Christmas film out there. It's more than deserving of that title. The actual inception of this movie is arguably just as fascinating as the film itself. Initially, it was an idea that was jotted down onto 24 pages, printed into 200 copies, and sent out as almost Christmas cards. It was only when one copy wound up in the lap of Hollywood studio executives, who, with the backing of golden boy Cary Grant, sought to bring this story to life. It just has everything to love about watching a film at this time of year. A thoroughly likeable protagonist who we spend an earnest amount of time with before his life begins to seep down the drain, at which point we follow him into the depths of his despair before we inevitably surge back up to jubilation as he realises his worth. I mean, that's just what Christmas is all about, in my opinion. Obviously, for many, it's the birth of Christ. For some, it's about the unwrapping of presents. But realistically, Christmas is all about a time of reflection to celebrate with friends and with family loving one another. Initially, I was kind of taken aback that we didn't get onto George's encounter with Clarence a little earlier on. But that doesn't mean to say that the film was in any way bad up until that point. What it did was allow us to fully invest in George Bailey as a character. We see him as a young boy working for Mr. Gower, who after learning about the death of his son, goes off the rails, almost slipping poison into someone's medication, before little George is able to pull him to his senses and stop him. Then we meet George slightly later in his youth, as we learn of all the dreams and ambitions he has to travel and explore. But sadly, as times go on, those adventures he so desperately yearns for slip away from reality, as his father passes away, and George is left to assume responsibility of the loan company. This ultimately leads George into competition with the nefarious and immensely unlikable Mr. Potter, played with the utmost moustache twirling villainy by Lionel Wainwright. 
Here we see the immediate divide between a rich, upper-class snob sneering down at those beneath him, and the idealist young man who manages to find the good in everyone he meets. As the years pass, George marries Mary, who has fawned over him since she was a little girl, and they reside in their dream house with their four children, living what many would consider a homely and idyllic lifestyle. Unfortunately for George, life begins to plummet when his buffoon of an uncle loses $8,000, which needed to be deposited, and with a bank examiner prepared to check their records, it spells disaster for George, with potential jail time looming. At this point, this is where Capra could have completely lost his audience, because George is pretty much emotionally distraught. His life has almost fallen apart, and he stands on a bridge, looking into the icy waters beneath him, ready to kill himself. It's hardly the most uplifting end to a presumably wholesome Christmas tale, but thankfully within the context of what has already occurred, and due to an outstanding performance by James Stewart, who marvellously balances the comedy and the drama, you feel that crushing low along with George. And it's those final 20 to 30 minutes where Capra absolutely nails the landing, making this a film that I'm going to do my darndest to ensure that I rewatch annually. Just before George throws himself over the edge, his guardian angel Clarence appears. Clarence, who has kind of been an audience surrogate following along the story with us. Clarence, played by a delightfully uplifting Henry Travers, fulfills the throwaway wish of George's and erases him from existence in the effort to show George the lives he had impacted and the effect if George Bailey was never around. We see that Mr. Potter ended up commercialising the town of Bedford Hills, turning into this underbelly full of tacky clubs and drunks, so basically South End. We learn that George couldn't save Mr. Gower, so he wound up poisoning some poor soul and serving jail time for it. His wife Mary is a librarian who's terrified when George approaches her. His own friends don't even recognise him and threaten to arrest him. Even his mother casts him out. At that point, George comes to his senses, wanting life to go back to the way it was, knowing deep down that despite his financial troubles, that doesn't even begin to compare to the love and comfort he feels surrounded by his friends and family. And in the film's most iconic scene, George runs through the town of Bedford Hills, wishing everyone a Merry Christmas, reunites with his family, only to then learn that the majority of the town's residents have chipped in their own money to help George recover the $8,000 he owes, clearing him of all debt and jail worries. And it's practically impossible not to even shed a single tear as the look on George's face gradually morphs into one of relief knowing that no matter how dark and bleak life may sometimes feel, your family and friends will always be there to support you. Clarence even notes it in his book, that no man is a failure when among friends. They all sing Auld Lang Syne, a bell rings to signify that Clarence has finally received his wings, and the film ends on the most joyous of notes. I mean, I can't really oversimplify it here. It's a Wonderful Life is a masterpiece. All the hype that you have heard about this film, if you've not seen it yet, believe me, it's true. My emotional investment never wavered for a second. The performances were stellar across the board. I laughed, I cried. But above all else, it embodied a beautiful Christmas spirit. One that says, you are not alone. And in a year where there have been so many struggles, and a year where... A lot of people are going to have to spend Christmas on their own. It's important to remember that people will always be there to pick you up when you're down. People will always be there to support you, to care for you, and to love you. There really is no better way to cap off 2020 by saying that after watching It's a Wonderful Life for the first time in forever, it is well and truly God's tear. <laughs> So there we are, those are my thoughts on It's a Wonderful Life. Let me know, have you seen the film? Did you like it? Is it one of your Christmas favourites? And here on Luke's Reviews, I'd like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas, or whichever holidays you are celebrating at this time. It's going to be an unusual Christmas for many people, but I do hope that we can all remember to make the most of what we have. And that also wraps up the festive month for For the First Time in Forever. I will be back next week to kick off 2021, and here is a little teaser of what you can expect.
thanks for watching. If you have enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more, please make sure that you click that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. All the links to my social media accounts, my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and my letterbox are all in the description below. And if you haven't liked the video, what are you, what are you still doing here? <laughs>